Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy YouTube channel and e-learning portal. I'm your host, Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is a channel which is dedicated to helping students of wine get through their WSET courses. And we're focusing here at the WSET Level 4 Diploma, the rather challenging but enjoyable Diploma. So this is the beginning of aims of canopy management and all things to do with canopy management. So we are looking at part one. This is available as free content on the YouTube channel Wine with Jimmy, uh, but is also available on the e-learning portal with all of my other exclusive videos to members only at www.winewith jimmy.com. So if you do want to make any comments or questions or concerns, you can do so on this video below in the comments section on the YouTube channel. Or you can get in touch via the social media that you see at the bottom of every slide. And thank you very much for everybody who gets in touch with such wonderful comments. And also you can get in touch via directly at winewithjimmy.com on the e-learning portal section. Okay, so let's rock and roll here on aims of canopy management. So with this, canopy management, what is it? So canopy management involves the organization of shoots, leaves, and fruit on the vine in order to improve the quality of the microclimate surrounding them and then in order to maximize grape yield and quality. During the second half of the 20th century, improvements in vine nutrition and pest control and the planting of vines on very rich and fertile soils have increased vine vigor, bigger, more production from the vineyard, leading to the need for more extensive canopy management in order to control and manage that growth. The principles of canopy management in viticulture were developed at Cornell University, Montpellier University, and then the Rukara Agricultural Centre in New Zealand. There's been some great work by the likes of Dr. Smart. So let's go through the aims of canopy management to begin with. So first of all, we have light interception and of course, maximizing light interception as well. Uh, and this is really to present a large canopy surface to the sun. So more of that surface area in order to gain that sun's energy. This will encourage early development uh, of the canopy in spring, avoiding inter-row shading by having a maximum ratio of canopy height to alley width of one to one. And this increases the vine's photosynthetic capability, of course, our aim here, compared, compared to a vine with a dense shaded canopy. And it means, of course, you can have the ability to ripen larger yields. So all around light interception. And then, of course, shading reduction. So vine organs, of course, things like buds, leaves and fruit develop in different ways when they are in shade in comparison to exposed in sunlight. So it's very much important to reduce canopy shading in the cluster or what we call the renewal zone. So let's go through four things here that we should avoid. Avoid shaded leaves to begin with, as their respiration will outstrip photosynthesis, so the leaf will actually consume more rather than producing energy. Of course, that's a huge negative. Um, plus shaded dormant buds. So shade reduces the viability of floral initiation in dormant buds, so decreases the number of inflorescence and therefore flowering and grapes in the following year. Shady conditions are associated with reduced bud fruitfulness uh, and with the bud producing more vegetative structures such as tendrils, 
rather than the reproductive structures such as inflorescence. This can lead to the vine, of course, uh, into the vegetative cycle. Shaded flowers have lower rates of fertilization and therefore lower rates of fruit set and shaded berries do not ripen as well in certainly in cooler climates. So we should be avoiding as much as possible those four shaded conditions. And then a little bit here about thinking wild. So the reasons for this little link here that we have is back to the, the way that vines used to grow in the wild. Outside of the monoculturalistic vineyard setting, a vine needs its fruit to be visible to birds for propagation of its seeds. Of course, in monoculture, in human production of vineyards, we propagate the vines. Uh, and here we are looking at, um, of course, wild vines needing to propagate them themselves and needing birds to spread the seeds for them. In forest conditions, the vine will grow until it finds sunlight. And this is the theory, of course, of um, really competition between plants and trees to gain a part of the canopy in order to sustain itself. So at this point, priority will be given developing influences and bearing fruit when it gains access to that canopy. This means that in viticulture, a vine canopy that is well exposed to sunlight will increase bud fruitfulness and hence has positive implications for grape yields in the next growing season. So just a nice little thing to throw in there. And the pictures you've got here, of course, you've got some wild trees, which I believe some of them are pious vines in, in Chile, uh, but wild large yields, uh, large trees that, of course, are very difficult to harvest uh, due to their height being, of course, in this instance, up to three meters. Uniform microclimate comes next. So it is, of course, imperative that we ensure that the microclimate, the microclimate is uniform for the grapes as much as possible. So the grapes in uh, vine to vine and then cluster to cluster will ripen evenly. This will synchronize the ripening of the fruit, which will lead to a greater chance of picking all of the fruit at their optimal ripeness. It really means that you're, when you're coming down towards harvest time, you're able to think a little bit more quicker and react. Maybe you've got some poorer weather coming in, coming into the area, and therefore you can harvest this fruit a little bit quicker and use all the fruit as well. So uniform growing, even ripening due to the microclimate there being uniform as well. And um, promoting vine balance comes next. So this is promoting the balance between the vegetative, vegetative and the reproductive functions of the vine. Too much fruit and not enough leaves. So if you've got too much fruit and less leaves, you're going to get overcropping. And this generally will produce poor quality fruit and reduce vine vigour. And then the other way around, too many leaves and not enough fruit will cause over vigorous growth, which also leads to poor quality fruit, which tends to be, of course, thinner, paler and more acidic. Next up is mechanization and aiding mechanization and labor within the vineyard. So arranging the vine canopy to ease mechanization and or manual labor can of course be exceptionally important in terms of locations that have more co commercial vineyards. Uh, maybe they need to have the grapes getting really from A to B quickly, the vineyard to winery quickly. Uh, so the speed of harvest is important. So this is um, particularly important around pruning, pesticide application as well, and harvesting as I just mentioned. So aiding mechanization and ease of labor. Then just talking a little bit about yield and grape health due to canopy management. And this really does link into some of the videos that we've already covered as a part of pests and diseases when looking at things like fungal diseases. So you may have seen these pictures actually before. Very good canopy management can also influence both yields 
and grape health by reducing fungal disease pressure. So due to poor air circulation and dense shaded canopies like you'll have on the left of this picture, they will tend to dry out more slowly after rainfall or morning dew and provide therefore quite suitable conditions for fungal diseases to develop. Dense canopies, like on the left again, are also quite problematic when you are spraying against those problems. Uh, that's because it's more difficult to ensure that the sprays you're using get to every part of the vine possible. So therefore, it, it kind of creates a shield against the spray, which can, of course, uh, limit the effectiveness of the, uh, the sprays that you are using. OK, so yield and grape health. Um, next up, then, is just linking in sunlight exposure on grape quality. So the influence of canopy management in determining the exposure of the leaves and grapes to sunlight also has implications for the level and balance of components in the grape and hence potential style and quality. The effects of promoting sunlight exposure within the canopy include everything we've got here in terms of creasing these factors. OK, so first up, we have increased sugar levels uh, and that can create greater overall photosynthesis, of course, in the grapes. Uh, increased tannin levels and a greater polymerization of those tannins, leading to less bitterness. Remember, tannin levels are what are really decided before the raisin and then they are ripened or polymerized after the raison, uh, and then of course that will reduce the bitterness if they are ripened enough. So for instance, if you are actually in a season that has a hell of a good summer with very high tannin levels produced in the grapes, but then a very poor autumn, you are looking of course at a lot of astringency in your grapes, very green and maybe harsh tannins, which can be of course very problematic in the final wine style. And then also enhanced anthocyanins, that's colour development, certainly, of course, in darker grapes like black grapes. Uh, and also the last point there, which is actually the top of the arrow, there are increased levels of some favourable aroma precursors and compounds. Uh, and these are the precursors are what are not um, not uh, tasted in the grapes, but will be brought out due to fermentation. And the great uh, category here to understand as a precursor are the terpenes that we have identified there, which include many of the fruity and floral compounds, such as the grapiness or floral edge, blossom, orange blossom, etc., coming through. And of course, that will be uh, increased due to that sunlight exposure uh, through better canopy management. And then we've got to look at, in fact, the decreases of sunlight exposure on grape quality as well. So this is in terms of, first of all, the malic acid and the decreasing of the malic acid. Warmer grape temperatures lead to more malic acid being broken down. Uh, in cellular uh, respiration. Otherwise, especially in cool climates, acidity levels would be un really, really unbalanced and exceptionally high. And that tartaric acid is what really will remain. But the malic acid can be exceptionally high and combine and create a very, very harsh acidity. And then also a, uh, a decreased amount of methoxypyrazines. These are, of course, the aroma precursors which give, uh, after fermentation, compounds such as herbaceous notes, grass, green pepper, uh, asparagus, and so on. Uh, and in varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon, this can often be quite an impactful negative compound, not always, 
in, in a lot of white varieties like Sauvignon Blanc, it's actually seen as a positive. It's quite accepted in Cabernet Franc in the Loire Valley, but with the varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon, often too much of it can be a little bit too unbalancing. So the ripening of uh, the methoxypyrazines, the decreasing of them is important and good canopy management and good sunlight exposure will lead to that. And then finally, this part will end here just talking about warm climates. Um, part two, we'll start to talk about vine balance in the canopy management. But with warm climates, uh, maximizing sun exposure is not always desirable. Up to this point, we've talked about only the benefits of maximizing sunlight exposure. Uh, and this, um, the, the area that it's not always a benefit is particularly in hot temperatures and intense sunshine, where that sunshine on the grapes could lead to sunburn, an issue such as sunburn, which has a quite significant negative impact on grape quality and yields. In such climates, therefore, canopy management techniques may be focused on providing a certain amount of shade for the grapes, such as the pergola vines that we find in Italy or Paral that we find in Spain and other variants of those. Okay, so that's our first video complete here on canopy management. Just to go through that again, we're talking about the aims of canopy management through maximizing light inception, talking about reduction of shade, thinking a little bit around um, thinking about wild and why we have the canopy in the vineyard. Uh, also looking at the microclimates being uniform, vine balance, uh, a little bit around uh, uh, talking about congested canopies versus open canopies, the um, creation of wanted characteristics in the grape, such as sugar, anthocyanin, tannin, polymerization, and terpenes, and also things like the reductions of malic acid and methoxypyrazine. So I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation on canopy management. Please do join us for part two of the aims of canopy management. This is only available on my e-learning portal. That's at www.winewithjimmy.com and that's on my e-learning portal portal. Please sign up to that if you want access to loads of exclusive video content, short written answer questions, flashcards, and all of those wonderful revision uh, tools to help you gain confidence for a success in your diploma, plus your all your other WSET needs. If you do have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can get in touch with me here at Wine with Jimmy via the social media you see at the bottom of every slide, or you can comment on this video here on the YouTube channel. Please make sure you click subscribe so you get our updates on a weekly basis here at Wine with Jimmy. Otherwise, uh, if you do find yourself in wonderful London town here in the United Kingdom, you guys know that I have a school, many schools, and a wine bar, so you can, can see me for a class, a glass, or a bottle. Cheers! Until next time, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye!